<laughs> My God, as we continue right here. Yes, yes. So as I, I, I can relate that to, to some of the people in the churches today. That yes, tongues is good. And yes, but then you you carry it on when the when everybody else is calmed down. You are the one person that come and you have every every kind of whatever to say and do. And when they ask you, what did the Lord say? You don't have nothing to say. You can't tell. You can't tell. Then keep your peace. Then keep your peace. Because sometimes we people get greedy. People get greedy. So the ones who got greedy, the manna from heaven spoiled. It turned to worm. Maggage, take it. Worm, take it. And it began to smell. But, but Bishop, this, as you're reading, I, you know, I, I'm getting this knowledge. God is the God of plenty. So if he said, oh, get what you need, get what you need, because he's the God of plenty. So if you get what you need, you don't worry about tomorrow and the day before, because he will provide again. Well, well, that's the point. That is the point. That is the whole point. So the Spirit of God is speaking unto you. Yes, because that is the point. He will provide, and you don't need to continue try to store up for yourself or help out God. Because you're saying to yourself, you know what? My mind tells me, if we take up a little extra pound, because maybe my neighbor might need it. Maybe... um what may have might not enough. So let me, but God said, no, no. He says, just take enough for yourself or for your family or for your household. That's all, that's, that was all that was commanded. And they that gathered it every morning, every man, verse 21, and they that gathered it every morning, every man according to his eating. And when the sun was hot, hot when the sun waxed hot, mean came hot, it melted and it came to pass that on the sixth day they gathered twice as much bread okay on the sixth day they gathered twice as much and therefore they had enough for their household okay so what was the point of them gathering enough on the sixth day they so that they can have on the seventh day because have, nothing would come from heaven on the seventh day and those who disobeyed when they didn't gather enough to last them for the seventh day, when they went out to get, there was no manner for them to get. There was none. And so those who didn't gather enough was in trouble. Okay? And that was the point. Because God says he will not send the manner from heaven on the seventh day. All right. That was that. Was that. So let's see if we had covered... Uh, verse 26. Okay. Watch verse 27. Uh huh. Approve it. Yes. What you say again, my sister? I say, you know where you see that greed? Well. And the place where they give out the free food? Ha ha ha. Talk to me. Talk to me. <clears throat> talk to me. You need to put a sign up. This is for the greedy, not the greedy. I know two people that yeah. go to every place that they don't give out free food. And they have food stored up in the kitchen cupboard mm -hmm. for years. Yes, yeah. Until it turns bad. Yes, that's, and that's it. And they go every Saturday and get more. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. They need to put aside this food is for the needy, not the greedy. That's right. Amen. Amen, my sister. Oh, yes. <coughs> My God. Wow. You were not over to get that whole thing. And you wouldn't believe how many people do that. They just go and get more and more and mm -hmm. more. Mm -hmm. I have a neighbor in this building that does that. One day I asked her to help. I was making some coffee and I ran out of milk. And I said, can I have a can of carnation milk? Mm -hmm. She told me to come and get it. And she, like, she dig to the back. And find one like she had here for four years or more. Mm. When I opened the can of condition milk, it was brown. Mm. I told her, I said, you know this is a sin, right? <laughs> her cupboards are so packed that she has to tie it, tie it close. Mm. And My she God. still goes and gets more. I still go and get That's more. That's a sin. Yeah. 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 Yeah, why Why is it? Because look at verse 27. Let's go on to verse 27 of Exodus 16 
for those who are just joining with us. Exodus 16. Now let, let's finish up this thing because God is proving a point where his Sabbath day is concerned. God is very serious about his Sabbath day. He's serious about the Sabbath day. Very serious because watch what happened. Verse 27 says, And it came to pass that there went out some of the people on the seventh day to gather. Why did they went out on the seventh day? They went out to gather and they found none. They found none. I'll tell you a story. Many of us who have been keeping the Sabbath day for years, when we prepare our meal Friday, it lasts until the seventh day Sabbath. And in the evening, after Sabbath, after sunset, that very f same food, if you have any left over, do not eat it Sunday morning because it's going to spoil. Hallelujah. I feel your anointing, Jesus. That's the God we serve and that sometimes we, we doubt him. I'm telling you, my brothers and sisters, when we prepare the meal correctly, God preserve it for all day Sabbath. And we, have, we can partake of it. But then when, when Saturday night comes, the things spoil on us. Or even the next day. So if you prepare it correctly, it won't spoil. But if you prepare it incorrectly and you try to hold it on the Sabbath, it will spoil. It will spoil. And so sometimes we have that kind of emergency where because it's spoiled, you have to run out and go get something new or something fresh so you can eat, uh, so the people can eat. Um, so, But that, then again, we'll get into, because there are certain things on the Sabbath day that you can do that is allowed to do, uh, and, and there are certain things that we are not um, encouraged to do, even though people might do it, but we are not encouraged to do it. So here... God says that in verse 27 that there was none for those who went out on the seventh day to gather manna. And then verse 28, wrap it up now. Verse 28, wrap it up. And the Lord said unto Moses, How, lo how long refuse ye to keep my commandments and my laws? See, for that the Lord has given you the Sabbath, Therefore, he has given you on the sixth day the bread of two days. Y'all hear that now? So 29 tells you. He has given you on the sixth days bread for, of two, day, bread for two days. Abide ye every man in his place. Stay in your home. Stay in your place. Stay home. You have food provided for two days. You have no need to go out on the seventh day to look for anything. Let no man go out of his place on the seventh day. So the people rested on the seventh day. So there we see where uh, they were in the wilderness. So when we look at the question, and when we look at the questions, after they left Egypt in bondage, they were taken to the wilderness and, and God uh, sealed the seventh day uh, from creation, but then when there were time where the people murmured, God sent food for them, and then God commanded them and tell them that the sixth day you must gather enough because you are gathering for two days because on the seventh day none will be provided for you. And so God sealed that by showing them that if you disobeyed, you will find yourself in a sticky place. If you gather too much, it will spoil on you. If you gather too little, you will starve for that day because there will be none provided for you. Any questions, anybody? Questions? I mean, I didn't, we ain't bring it to, the, to the, our current age yet, but... Um, Everybody understand? You all understand what took place. Very good. So let's look at Genesis 2. Let's look at Genesis 2. All right. What distinguishes the seventh day from the other six days? And that one is easy to answer. What distinguished? What was so different about the seventh day? What, uh, 
was so different about the seventh day. Distinguished means different or unusual. The, uh, all right, so Genesis chapter 2, reading from verse 1 to 3. Genesis chapter 2, verses 1. Finish, says one. Mm -hmm. And he rested on the um, seventh day. The seventh day. Mm -hmm. Seventh day, he has finished he has rested. Um, yeah. Yes. That's the difference. So he had rested from... And he, and he mm -hmm. Verse 3, yes, verse 3, read, it says, And God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it, because that in it he had rested from all his work which God created and made. So, this, so, so the Sabbath was not made for Jews. This was from the beginning. It's not because you are a Jew you keep the Sabbath. The Sabbath wasn't made for you as a Jew to keep. The Sabbath was made for all of us to keep, all of us to observe, because God himself observed it. God himself rested on the seventh day. It says it right there in Genesis. And this is way before people were, 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 were a nation. This was here before people became a nation. It was from the beginning. Verse 2, right? After verse 1 said that he finished. Verse 1 said that thus the heaven and the earth were finished. And all the host of them. And on the seventh day God rested. Or on the seventh day God ended his work which he had made. And he rested on the seventh day from all his work which he had made. God did it. Does God need rest? No, God don't need rest. It's just a matter of showing us that God stopped. Working. It's not that God needed rest. God is just showing that he stopped working. He stopped doing creation. Because he had finished all that he needed to finish on the sixth day. And then on the seventh day, he said that he didn't do any creating. And, and, and Bishop, Bishop, can the, um, that God is showing us, we have to do things one day at a time. We don't do it all. That's why it was like an example to us too. One day, at a time. one day at a time, my sister. That's all you can do. Who can work two days? You can't work two days. You still have to take things one day at a time. No matter what you do. On the seventh day, on the seventh day, on the seventh day, do everything in one day. But he's showing us that we can take day by day and yeah. think. Yeah, of course you can. Yes. You you... From the beginning. Yes. You do a little today, you do a little tomorrow if life spare. But the thing is, yeah. you do for today what you can do, and you leave for the next day what you cannot do. And if God tarry, and you live to see the next day, then you finish what you started. Yeah. So let's look at Exodus 13. That's, thir why, he, mm -hmm. that's why he right. started from the river first, mm -hmm. the Marmite, and then he kept on going. Mm -hmm. Let's look at Exodus 31, Exodus 31, 17. And Exodus 35, so Exodus 31, verse 17. What did God declare it this day to be? Look at what the distinction now, verse 17. Read, look at it and read it. Exodus 31. Exodus 31, verse 17? Yeah, yeah. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, No, no, no. That's not it. Mm -hmm. It was a sign between me and the children of Israel. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. 17, verse 17. <clears throat> mm -hmm. Verse 17. Exodus 31, 17 tells you. It is a sign. It is a sign between me and the children of Israel forever. Mm-hmm. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, and on the seventh day he rested and was refreshed. That's right. So it's a sign. So if you say to yourself, well, I'm not an Israelite, it's a sign between the Israelites and God, but I'm not an Israelite. I am not an Israelite. 
No, you are not an Israelite in the flesh, maybe. And maybe some of us might be the descendant from one of the 12 tribes of, 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 uh, of Israel. We might be the descendant as well. But if you are not even the descendant, okay, spiritually you have become Israel. Spiritually you have been engrafted in and you have become a part of Israel spiritually. Not physically, but spiritually you have become a part of Israel. How do I know that? I know that because I read it in, I believe if not Romans, they're in Romans. That's another study, uh, was it Romans 6 or 7 that tells you that you have been engrafted in, okay? Um, I mean, the Bible tells you that you have been engrafted in. You have become a part of Israel when you accepted Jesus Christ and made him your Lord and, and Savior, all right? So, um, boy, oh boy, oh boy, where did I have that? I have it somewhere there. All right, so... We'll find it. I'll find that scripture uh, where God says you have been engrafted in. Um, well, okay. I don't have to look that up right, right now. But um, it might just come back to my memory where it is exactly in the New Testament. So maybe when we get to the New Testament, we'll bring that up again. But the point is that it is a sign. It is a sign between God and man. And, and, but here it says, yes, it's a sign between Israel. All right? So if you don't feel that, like you are part of Israel, then by all means, it's not, it, you don't think it, uh, uh, it pertains to you. So that's the, that's the defense that people have today in order for them not to observe the seven-day Sabbath. They would want to tell you that they are not um, part of Israel. They are not part of the 12 tribe and they would tell you that I'm not a Jew I'm not this and the Sabbath is only for Jew but the Sabbath was not um, only given to the Jew the Sabbath was given to man it the Sabbath it was for mankind however when God chose Jacob to be Israel and from Jacob came the 12 tribe of Israel then it's determined uh, in the wilderness that uh, God made them his people. They became his people. And so the Sabbath is a covenant between him and them. Okay? The way you know that a true, a true Israelite is a true Israelite is because he observed the seventh-day Sabbath. He observed the seventh-day Sabbath because he believed that it's a sign, it's a covenant between him and God. All right, now let's look at uh, 35. <clears throat> what would I say? What I say here? Exodus 30, 30, 35, 35 verse 1. Yeah, we did 31 already, 31 verse 17. Um, so let's look at uh, Exodus 35 and verse 1, 2, 3. I hope you are... You're learning something today, all right? Because we're we, we going to bring it home. We're going to bring it home. All right, Exodus 35, verse 1, 2, and 3. And, and Moses gathered all of the congregation of the children of Israel together and said unto them, These are the words which the Lord had commanded that ye should do them. Six days shall work be done. All right, very good, very good. So we, we we're gonna we're gonna take this to a a deep place right now. I'm gonna take this to a deep place with you. All right. So. Moses gathered all the congregation of the children of Israel, brought them together <clears throat> on the Sabbath day, brought them together, okay? Uh, these are the words which the Lord commanded me to tell you. So Moses is saying, these are the words that the Lord commanded me to tell you that you should do. You should do. Six days shall work be done 
you must work for six days. Day one, day two, day three, day four, day five, and day six. You must work. You must plow the field. Put the goat, tie out the goat to eat. Feed the sheep. Tend to the flock. Board up your house. Dig hole. Any civil work. Build a house. Clean up your house. Vacuum up your house. Sweep off your veranda. Shine off your veranda. Sweep off the outside. Plant flowers. Whatever you want to do, whatever consists of work that you want to do, <clears throat> go and work for another man. Do all that. Six days you shall do all of that. But when it comes to the seventh day, stop. Rest. Refresh yourself. Six days shall work be done, but on the seventh day, there shall be to you in a holy day a Sabbath of rest. To the Lord, whosoever doeth work therein shall be put to death. That's a law. That is a law. That's a law. The commandment is six day you shall work, but the seventh day you shall rest. When death is attached to that command, it becomes a law. The punishment of death has been attached to the commandment and that commandment now becomes a law. So from the commandment, it now becomes a law because there's a punishment attached to it. There's a punishment attached to it or maybe a reward might be attached to it. But here it says that debt shall be your reward. Debt shall be your reward reward if you disobeyed and go out and work on the seventh day and the lord said you shall not kindle no fire mean you can't catch a stove you can't put up your trees to on wood woods fire out a door you can't go to door say you boil tea you can't go to door say you do all these kind of um, crazy stuff to cook breakfast your car meal porridge and your ackee and saltfish as long as fire is involved, you must not do it on the seventh day Sabbath. As long as fire is involved, you cannot do it. Okay? Today we have a way to get around that. We're not talking about that yet. Because if I was in the congregation of a lot of people right now, they would have a lot of questions to ask. So, this Sabbath here is pointing to an eternal rest. That's number one. This Sabbath, the seventh-day Sabbath, the reason why God wants us to keep the Sabbath day and to honor it and to rest is because it's pointing to that eternal rest where we'll be with God or with Jesus Christ in the kingdom of heaven. And we'll be wor no work will be done. We won't have no work to do. No kind of work will be done in the kingdom of God. None whatsoever. It will be joy and speak of the full of glory. All we will know is that we are worshiping God, we are happy, we are blessed, we are good. Isn't it? You won't be working at all. You won't be feeding yourself food. You won't be brushing your teeth. You won't be combing your hair. You won't be taking a shower. You won't have none of those things to, be, to, to, to do. Now, the second part of this now. Here we go. Why do we keep the Sabbath today then? When people tell you that it has been nailed to the cross, or when people tell you that the Sabbath is no more to be kept because you are not a Jew, or they tell you for whatever other reasons, Sunday is a day that we worship now, and that's all I know, and that's all I'm, because I'm not a Jew, I'm going to keep my Sunday, and I'm going to, okay, fine, no problem, I ain't saying no. You hold on to that, that's fine by me. But I'm teaching you what the Word of God tells me to teach you. And I'm telling you what the Word of God says, okay? The Word of God says that sixth day we shall work, but the seventh day we must rest. Now, we cannot kindle fire, meaning that you can't cook on the Sabbath day. You can't go outside, go catch up fire on the Sabbath day. That's what he's saying, kindle no fire. That's what it's really saying to us, that we must not do these things on the Sabbath day. Okay, fine, no problem. 
But the law says that if you are caught, you should be put to death. That is what Jesus nailed to the cross. That section of the law, that part of the law that you must be put to death is what Jesus Christ nailed to the cross. Today, his grace cover you. His mercies cover you. And if you break the Sabbath or disobey and do something that you shouldn't do on the Sabbath, you can ask God to forgive you and he will forgive you. That comes through Jesus Christ. Holy Ghost, I feel your anointing. Hallelujah. That's Amen. what Jesus did for us today. No more that you should be put to death. But Jesus says, I died that you might live. And that is the law that Jesus Christ nailed to the cross. Well, one of the laws, there are other stuff that Jesus Christ nailed to the cross, but this is one of them. That today, if you break the Sabbath, you will not be put to death, but you will be forgiven by God. God have mercy upon whom he pleaseth. He forgives whom he pleaseth. You can't tell God who to forgive. You can't even tell God when to forgive somebody or how to forgive somebody. You have no business with that. It's the relationship that you and God have. That's what you're concerned about. Not the relationship that someone else have with God. So if you have been breaking the Sabbath years and years, God has forgiven you and God will forgive you until the day when the trump of God sound, until the day when there is no more mercy. So you will not be stoned or put to death according to the law because Jesus Christ has changed that. He has nailed that to the cross. He says, you are, I die on the cross. I, Jesus Christ, die on the cross that you now, now might have life. You now might live. If you sin, you should live. That's why they were ready to stone the lady that they caught in adultery. That's why they were ready to stone her to death because that was the law. If you have been caught in adultery, we by law are supposed to put you to death. That was the law that they were supposed to put that person to death. But then Jesus Christ was like, no, I am here now. Even what about the man that she had been, she had been committing adultery with? Why don't you stone him to death too? No, no. So what about you? How many times have you were caught in, how many times have you committed adultery, but maybe because you didn't get caught, but now you're ready to stone her to death because, oh, wow, she's caught. Oh, what a dreadful thing she has done. No, Jesus Christ let them know that I have come to fulfill. I have come that she might be forgiven and that she might live. So you can't stone her to death because you also are guilty of death. And if you stone her to death, then you must be stoned to death. But God is merciful, and that's why we are living under grace today. And people take Jesus' grace as poppy sure. People take Jesus' grace as something they can do. They can sin anytime they want, sin anyhow they want, and then, oh, I'm under grace. His grace covers me. Oh, his grace will forgive. Oh, his grace. Yes, God says, what shall we say then? Shall sin abound? Shall sin, shall you continue in sin? Shall, should sin be the, the, the order of the day just because I have grace upon you? God says, no, where there is sin, grace much more abound. He said, not because you sin uh, and you do all these kind of things and, and you are under grace, that doesn't mean that you must presumptuously go out and continue to do it. So let's, let's carry it home now. Some people say today we, so let's, let's carry it home a little bit. Um, first, let me go, let me move on uh, to one more. Go to Matthew chapter 5 before I carry it home. I'm going to tie everything together with, with today, modern society. How we can, how we can safely um, observe the Sabbath day without, um, without getting ourselves in, in, in jeopardy or putting ourselves in jeopardy or putting our souls in jeopardy. So let's go to Matthew 5, 17 first. Let's go to the New Testament. Now that we are in the New Testament, we took care of the Old Testament. The law has been established once again from creation. 
uh, okay, the commandment was given for us to observe the Sabbath day, okay, that's a command, and then when debt was attached to the commandment, it became a law, all right, so now we understand that, and a lot, okay, uh, here we go now, Matthew chapter 5 and verse 17, uh, because the question is really asking that when Jesus first came, did he change the day, that holiday to another? So let's look at Matthew 5, 17 and 18. Matthew 5, 17. You, you want somebody to read? Yeah, go ahead and read it, sister. Go, yeah. Think not that I am come to destroy the law or the prophets. I am not come to destroy but to fulfill. For verily I say unto you, Till heaven and earth pass, one jack or one tittle shall in no wise pass from the law, till all be fulfilled. There you go. <clears throat> so, God honor his word above everything else. Okay? So, from the commandments, we get laws. And we get the laws of God. God gives us commandment, and the commandments are intertwined with laws. Okay? The laws, you cannot have a law unless you have a commandment. You cannot have a, a law unless you have a commandment. But you can have a commandment and you don't have a law. You can have a command and, and, and people get this mix up. People get this mix up. Even the Church of God, seven day, get it mixed up also. And maybe they might tell me I'm wrong. Maybe they, they might tell me, say, no, the, 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 the commandments are laws. Maybe they might tell me that. But I can, I can defend that. Because there are places in the Bible where the Lord says commandment, laws, and statutes. So, so, but that's not what we are studying here right now. But we are studying uh, here is that the Creator chose the seventh day as the Sabbath. And you cannot change it. And that's why it says that man will think to change times and law. So even what Constantine did when he changed the day of worship to Sunday... There are still people who still holds on to the seventh day Sabbath and they are willing to die for that. I am willing to die for that. You put my head on a chopping block and tell me to denounce the Sabbath or to say that Jesus Christ is just another man. You might as well kill me. You might as well take my life because I will never do that. Because the Sabbath is part of God's commandment. Just like it says, thou shalt not lie. Thou shalt not steal. Those are, those are commandments. But then laws are attached to them when you lie and when you steal. Laws, laws now, laws come from those commandments. So here we say, um, Jesus says that, listen, truly I tell you, till heaven and earth passed away, not one jot or little shall pass away from, from his word or from the law of God. So when we say the law here, we are referring to the law of God. We're not referring to the law of man, traditions of man, doctrines of man. We are referring here to the law of God. That's what we are referring to. Okay? All right, now. Some might say, okay, it's Moses' law. Some might say, okay, God gave Moses the law and Moses gave the children of Israel whichever term you want to use. But I want to let you know that the laws of God extend beyond the law of Moses. The law of God extend beyond the law or the laws that Moses established even through the guidance of God. Okay? That is very key to understand. Why? So the law of God is not the commandments. It's more than the commandments. The law, of, yeah. The commandments of God is, is what he tells you to do. The laws of God is what governs you, governs you. Explain to you when you when you disobey the law it explains what will happen to you so that when you disobey the law of god and when you disobey the commandment of god 
The Bible says the wages of sin is death. The wages of sin is what? Death. So the end thereof is death. When you disobey God's law and when you disobey his commandments. The end of it is death. Now that sounds a little contradictory. Because if Jesus Christ came and died, that you might live and live more abundantly and the, 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 the commandments say that I must not kill, I must not covet, I must not commit adultery and all these things. And you are telling me that when I commit those things or do those things, I must be put to death. But then you are telling me that Jesus Christ changed all of that and say that, okay, I will live. I will be forgiven. Now it sounds a little like, come on now, what are you trying to say to me? So what is the answer? Here is the answer. Think not that I come to destroy the law or the prophets. I come not to destroy, but I come to fulfill. Then you have to ask yourself, what are the things that Jesus Christ is fulfilling? Or what are the things that Jesus Christ has fulfilled? So, all of us have been given a, cho a choice. You have been given a choice. I have been given a choice. In the beginning, when the people of God in the Garden of Eden disobeyed God's commandment, disobeyed God's law, what happened to them? They died. They died. They died. They died in this world. They died where? In this world. But then Jesus Christ came and says, listen, listen, I didn't come to change the laws that have been established already, but I only come to fulfill it. So even the law that says that a man must die because of his sin Jesus Christ died on the cross because of sin. Y'all get it now? Jesus Christ died on the cross because of sin. He took on, oh, not, not sin of his own, but he died because of, and then now, his grace, his grace, Redemption has come that you and I might live. But if you choose not his grace and you choose to continue to live in sin, then his grace don't cover you. If you choose to continue to live in sin, the grace of God does not cover you. You are not of his. You cannot be changed. And continue to live in sin. You cannot say you're a child of God. And continue to live in sin. Something is wrong but not the word of God. You all understand what I'm saying? So let's go a little deeper now. Let's go a little deeper then. Let's go a little deeper. Okay. Luke chapter 4 verse 16. Let's go a little deeper. Because Jesus Christ fulfilled the law of death as well. He fulfilled that law. He died on the cross. And then he gave us a new covenant. He gave us a new covenant. Luke 4 verse 16 says what? Luke 4 16. We got to, we got to, <laughs> no. Oh Lord, we, we, we here for a while. Luke uh, 4 verse 16. But it's good, it's good. I'm going to wrap it up just about now, right after we, 
we read two more scriptures. Luke 4, 16. Read for me somebody while I'm looking it up. All right, I'm there. Luke 4, verse 16 says, And he came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up. And as his custom was, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up, and stood up to read. So Jesus Christ would be found in the synagogue on the Sabbath day. So Jesus Christ himself kept the Sabbath day while he was here on earth. All right, so let's look at um, Acts 13, 44. There's a message to the, to the Gentile. There's a message to the Gentile. Acts 13, 44. There's a message to the Gentile. What is the message? Acts 13, 44. We're going to look and find out what is the message. And so... There, there has to be death for life to come forth. Somebody had to die. You had to be, there got to be a dying for life to come forth. There has to be what? A dying for life to come forth because then you get a new birth. You get a rebirth and that's what they have, reincarnation. That's how they end up with reincarnation and all a lot of stuff. Because they, after this life, they believe that you continue to live in another world or in another way, or some will teach you in another body, okay? If I die as a human being, why would I want to come back as an animal or as a tree? That don't make no sense to me. Why would I want? I am, I am high above the animals. I am high above the trees. But when I die, they're telling me that you are reincarnated into a bird, into an a, a, a animal, into... Why would I want that? That means you are you are de you are back you I don't know you de you de what you de what they call it <laughs> you digress or you degrade you know first you were a higher form of animal now you die you are reincarnated into something else that's lesser than 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 what or who you were when <laughs> sometimes we need to think we need to think about what these people teaching out there all right so uh, verse fourteen says. And the next Sabbath day came also the whole city together to hear the word of God, which was talking about the Gentiles in the, in the day when, 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 when the apostles went out to preach the word, okay? The, uh, they wanted to go to verse, um, they should have started the reading a little higher, but let me start the reading a little higher um, up for your bridging. Let's go to verse 38, verse 38 and come on down. Um, be it known unto you, therefore, men and brethren, that uh, uh, through through this man, uh, or though T H R O, though this man is preached unto you, the forgiveness of sins, and by him all that believe are justified from all things from which he count not, he could not be justified by the law of Moses. There we go. <clears throat> The laws of Moses could not justify us. The laws of Moses, even though God gave him the law to govern the people at that time, at that time the law truly could not bring repentance to them. At that time the law truly could not um, bring that change that you're really supposed to, to have. And, and so it's, it says it here that the law of Moses could not even justify uh, uh, the people back then but here he says beware therefore lest that come upon you which is spoken of in the prophet behold he dis despisers and one and wonder uh and and perish for i work a work in your days a work which he shall in no wise believe though a man declare it unto you. And verse 42 says, And when the Jews were gone out of the synagogue, the Gentiles besought that these words might be preached to them the next Sabbath. Now this also take away from the point where a brother and I was having a discussion 
and trying to tell me that Jesus Christ did not die for the, the world or for the nations of the world, but he only died for the chosen people of God, the 12 tribe of Israel. So he's trying to say that anyone who's, who's not of the 12 tribe of Israel, anyone who is not an Hebrew, Christ did not, did not die for them. A lot, again, another man telling me that, no, that section of scripture is in error because Christ did not die for the world. Now, when you say the world, it doesn't mean, it doesn't mean the, the physical world. It means the people in the world. So in that context, it's talking about Christ dying for not just Jews, but he died for Gentiles. He died for those who were not circumcised by flesh, those who were of, of another um, um, of another nature. Okay? So some people will tell you that Christ didn't die for anybody who is not a, who is not a Hebrew or who is not an Israelite. And I don't buy that. I would never believe that. But here it is, Gentile, the word was preached unto the Gentile. And they, and they asked the apostles to come back and preach it unto them the next Sabbath. So at, at one point, there became a discrepancy between the people of God and the Jews. The Jews say, when you become uh, a follower of Jesus Christ, you should keep the Jewish laws and the Jewish um, ritual. And they were saying, no, we don't have to keep the Jew because, and then Paul declared that, listen, you are not being justified by the laws of Moses. But now through the death of Jesus Christ, you are being justified. Through the repentance of your heart, you are now being justified. The gospel is that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. He came into this world to die for your sin, that you might have life and have life abundantly, that you might live and not die anymore, but you have eternal life. That is the gospel. That is the joy, uh, uh, the good news. The good news is that you don't have to die, but you can live. You can close your eye in this world and rest. But then when the trump of God is sound, you, you shall rise. You shall rise to meet him in the air. And there you will be with him. You will have everlasting life. That's the reason why you live the way you live. That's the reason why I live the way I live. That's the reason why I serve him. Because when I close my eye, I don't fear death. I'm not afraid to die. Anytime death comes, when my time is, is, is on earth, is ended, I welcome it. I welcome it at any moment, at any time, because I know I have hope in Jesus Christ. I don't have hope in this world. And that's why my car is not important to me. My house is not important to me. Any possession I have, it's not important to me. But my soul is more important to me. My relationship with Jesus Christ is more important to me than anything else in this world. Is thine heart right with God? That is more important to me than anything else in this world. Because it will pay me to live good than to gamble. Why would I gamble and say, oh, maybe there is a God, maybe there isn't a God. So I do whatever I want. I take a gamble. I am not losing nothing by living right. I am not losing nothing by living good. I'm not losing anything. Maybe living good for you is to be in a party every week. Maybe living good for you is to have your friends to come over and you all have a great time and you all swear and curse and cut up and carry on. That's a good time for you. That's your living good. But it's not living good according to the will of God or according to the words of God. I'd rather live good by following the words of God and know that I have a hope that when I die in this world, I will live again. I'd rather do that than to enjoy myself with the pleasures of this world. And at the end, I found out that this God is real, this God is true, and then it's too late. Too late shall be your cry. Is that what you want? I'd rather keep the Sabbath today and be wrong than not keeping it and be right. <laughs> Y'all go figure that one out. You figure that one out. I'd rather live with Christ today than to die without him. And I'd rather die with him than to live without him. You go figure that one out. Amen. Amen. If it's wrong to keep the Sabbath, let me be wrong. Because my wrong just might be right in the eyes of God. But it's probably wrong in your eyes. 
or in your knowledge or in your understanding. But I'd rather keep the Sabbath today and guarantee my space in the kingdom of heaven than break the Sabbath every week, week after week. And at the end, I lose out. Because somebody told me that I don't have to keep the Sabbath, I listen to them. And at the end, I lose out. Whose fault is it? My fault. Acts 80, um, Acts 17 and verse 2. Acts 17, verse 2. Let's go through these real quick. Acts 17, verse 2. And Paul, as his manner was, went in unto them. Watch this now, brethren, because I'm going to bring out a point again. <clears throat> and Paul, as his manner was, went in unto them. And, th and, 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 and three Sabbath days reasoned with them out of the scriptures. After Jesus Christ died and ascended into heaven, they were still keeping the Sabbath. The Jews were still keeping the Sabbath. Those who got converted to be followers of Jesus Christ were keeping the Sabbath. So what happened? What really happened then? Let's look at Acts 18 and verse 4 and 11. Because something had to happen. All right, so verse, uh, verse 4 and 11, verse 4 says, and he reasoned in the synagogue every Sabbath and persuaded Jews and the Greek. You all hear that? Jews and the Greek. I need to go back and mark these words, these verses. All right, let's look at verse 11. And he continued there a year and six months teaching the word of God amongst them. So if Jesus Christ only died for the, for the, the lost stock of, of, of Abraham, if Jesus Christ only died for the chosen people who were chosen by him in the wilderness as the children, children of Israel, why on earth would Greek and Gentiles come to him. That means they coming to him is in vain. <clears throat> that means anyone who is not a Hebrew come to Jesus Christ. His coming to Jesus Christ is in vain. And I refuse to accept that. Jesus Christ died for whosoever will. Whosoever believe it. Because there are Jews today who don't believe. There are the Jews that are descendant from Abraham who does not believe today. There are Jews, the descendant from the 12 tribe of Israel, tribe of Benjamin, Judah, and whatever, <clears throat> today still does not believe that Jesus Christ is Lord. So what are we saying today? We're saying that The law was a slave master. And not because I say the law, that doesn't mean that I'm saying the commandments. When I say the law, I specifically mean the law. I mean the moral law. That's what I'm talking about. The civil law. The moral laws, the sacrificial laws. That's what I'm talking about. That's what God is talking about. Those laws cannot save you. Keeping them as a Pharisees, it will not save you. Keeping them as a Sadducee, it will not save you. 
keeping them as a person who have been engrafted into uh, Israelites or into Hebrew, keeping those laws will not keep, will not save you. Keeping the laws of atonement will not save you. The sacrificial laws that you were sacrificing, killing a, a lamb, a ram, a goat, a sheep, whatever, for your sin offering cannot save you today. Those are what we call uh, sacrificial laws. When you had to sacrifice uh, during Yom Kippur and all of that, all, all those times. The Feast of Harvest and all of that will not save you. The Feast of Trumpets will not save you. The Feast of Tabernacle will not save you. But believing in Jesus Christ will. Because he fulfilled all, all that needed to be fulfilled. And for the covenant, the new covenant to be established, he had to die. He had to die. But not because he died, that doesn't mean it's the end of it. That doesn't mean that, oh, everything is abolished. The civil law that says that you cannot work on the Sabbath, and if you do work on the Sabbath, you will be put to death. Jesus Christ has nailed that to the cross. Jesus Christ is saying, now you will be forgiven. But you are given a chance to stop working on the Sabbath. Now let's get a little deeper because this is the part that most of you want to understand and know. The Bible says we are not to kindle the fire on the Sabbath. And the Bible says that we are not to work on the Sabbath. Six days shall thou labor and do all thy work. Well, my brothers and sisters, here we go. There are many equipments today. There are many what we call appliances today that does not use fire. There are many appliances today that we have that does not use fire. I'm going to say it again because some people don't believe it and they don't accept it and they don't receive it. Because they feel that electricity take the place of fire. If electricity take the place of fire, why do we still start fire today? No, electricity did not take the place of fire. <clears throat> because you can have electricity and you still need fire. You can have electricity and you still need fire to cook with. Can I break it down for somebody today? Because a lot of people, because you are so um, fearful, God don't want you to be so fearful. God wants you to live in love and, and, and he wants you to live a good life, but he don't want you to, to you know, some people are so fearful, they become, they become so holy, 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 sanctimonious, sanctimonious, that not even, not even a fork and knife they will pick up on Sabbath to feed themselves. Because some people don't eat on Sabbath today. Picking up a fork and knife, they have a problem with that. Yes, are you so holy and sanctimonious that you say, oh, I, I'm not working on the Sabbath, that even when you receive a job, that say, okay, one week you're off and one week you're on, you condemn the person for that. No, my brothers and sisters, on the Sabbath, you can, you can maintain life, you can do good. If, you're, if your job is in the emergency area, where you have to maintain life. You might be a nurse. You might be a doctor. Life has to be maintained. There's provision in God's words for you where that is concerned. There's provision in God's word that, that okay, you know, because here's the next thing. If, if you're a Jew, <clears throat> you might have to work in a hospital on the Sabbath because you're a doctor or you're a nurse. Maybe in the house of God, in the synagogue, somebody faint out and they need a doctor to come and resuscitate them. And that's why they had a problem with Jesus Christ when he was healing on the Sabbath, because he feel that, no, you can't do that. If a life is threatened and a person is about to die, they feel that, let him die. Let him die, because if you go and assist them, you are doing work. These are the things that Jesus Christ was setting in order and trying to make us understand that 
you can do good on the Sabbath. If your animal fall in the pit, don't leave the animal in the pit until the end of the day. Take the animal out of the pit. Save the life. And these are the things that they, the Jews had problems with, with Jesus Christ. If you're hungry, if you're hungry, here is food for you to eat. They're saying you cannot pick the grape from the grapevine on the Sabbath and eat it. But Jesus Christ is saying that, listen, no, not so, my brother. If you're hungry and it's a Sabbath day and you are in the field, you're not harvesting. You are just picking a little portion to feed your hunger. You are not harvesting. You are not doing agriculture just because you pick a fruit to eat. If you are sick on the Sabbath and you need hot water to make a tea, why can't a person use a whatever means they have to make a tea on the Sabbath and give you so you can survive, so you can live. You see, my brothers and sisters, that's what Jesus Christ is saying. That there are things that we can do on the Sabbath, but according to the laws of Moses, if you did them, you must be put to death. Jesus Christ said, no, I'm nailing those things to the cross. My grace is sufficient for all. If you have an emergency, take care of the emergency. Don't say it's a Sabbath day. I can't. But if you know that you have the time to make preparations for your meal for Friday and Saturday, then make it. Don't wait, don't wait till Saturday to go out in the store and get the preparation because then you are in error. But if you find yourself on a Friday evening in an emergency, not able to make preparation for the Sabbath, then when the Sabbath come, what would you do? Because Friday you found yourself in an emergency. God is not going to punish you, my brother, my sister. God is not going to cut you off. God is not going to condemn you. That's why Jesus Christ died, so that you might live. Amen, amen. Glory be to God. Pastor. Yes, ma'am. Wait, 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 Sister Teresa, wait, wait. Yeah, go ahead, Sister Jocelyn, yeah, go ahead. Um, I was just asking, um, so since you can't cook on, our, on the Sabbath, it's okay to buy food outside or you shouldn't do none of that? Yeah, that's the, that's, that's, that's the thing. A true, Sabbath, a true Sabbath keeper would not cook or would not buy things from the outside. They would prepare from Friday for Saturday. But if, 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 the, if Friday comes and there's an emergency and you were not able to prepare for the next day, then all, all means necessary, you need to go ahead and um, make the preparation for the next day, Sabbath, or, or you know, do whatever you must. Do whatever, yeah, do, use whatever you have in your house. Use whatever you have at home. Because you're not going to die for one day. You're not going to die. You know, and people think that they got, if you're in a dying situation, then fine. But if you're not in a dying situation, you just you just do whatever you got to do from what you have at home until sunset. I'm just telling you the truth. Now, I mean, you don't have to agree, but that's just the truth of it. Amen. Yeah, Sister Teresa, yeah. Okay, well, I want to ask you something, because I know some people, they, they keep it not only, but they still go to church on Sunday. Is that right? Yeah, that's all right. You can go to church... Um, Anytime, anytime you want. You can go to church seven days a week. But you got to understand that, that going to church seven days a week not going to save you. It's obedience to God. 
So, no, no, I, I get it. I'm getting to your point. But so if you keep the Sabbath holy and then you still go to church on Sunday, now, now it can put you in a little sticky place. It can put you in a little sticky place. But you, you could still go to church on Sunday. It's no, nothing wrong with you going to church. But it goes a little deeper than just going to church. Okay. It goes a little deeper than that. Um, and I have a question. Yeah. Um, like you said, we, if we don't prepare, we can, use, we can do finger food. Like, we can do yeah. sandwiches and yeah. this part if we don't prepare. Yeah, yeah, that, yeah. Have an electric part, so we can use electric part yeah, well, too, right? yeah, and that, yeah, and that, that, that draws. You see, that also draws a little discrepancy amongst the, um, the, the people of God with, with that, because if 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 you are going to cook using the electric um, the electric equipment, it puts you in a little tricky spot because you don't need to cook. It's not that because. If you if you if you simply warming up something, you you can get you can get a little leadway to do that. But 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 the cooking part is what is what is where the line is drawn. Okay. That's where the line is drawn. The cooking part. So if you had people, so there's some people they make preparation from Friday, and they 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 warm up the food on Saturday and and eat it, and some people don't. Some people warm it and some people don't. You understand what I'm saying? But but the point what Jesus, okay. the point what God is teaching you, the point what God is teaching you is not is not is not that. He's teaching you that you must make preparation from Friday. Have enough from Friday so that okay. tomorrow the Sabbath you don't have to go and make the preparation. Okay. And then probably could put it outside early so it could get room temperature, right? Yeah, you could you could do that, but some people don't like that. Some people don't like that. Don't do that. But you know, it's not about it's not about our liking, but it's about what God wants us to do. God wants us to make preparation and rest from our work. So when we get into yeah, and and, and don't and don't um, light the fire because um, lighting the fire meaning what's the reason for lighting the fire? You're not lighting the fire to keep warm, really. But lighting the fire mean really referring to cooking the food. That's really what God is. That's really what the word of God is saying. And so you can light. You can light fire if you are in at a. That's why Jesus Christ came. That that we don't have to be burdened with those laws. We don't have to be burdened because the gospel is going to be preached in Alaska. The gospel is going to be preaching in other parts of the world where where sun don't set for three months. Sun don't set. What do you do? So you you see, this the, the Sabbath is not to be a burden because God says that um, we are to keep the Sabbath. The Sabbath is really leading you to that eternal rest, and so we practice now. We practice because in the kingdom of God made new, you 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 won't need what you need right now. You won't need it. You won't have it. So you see. If you if you believe in the in, in, in the Sabbath as a covenant between you and God, you're gonna make every effort to make the right preparation. But if you don't make the if you don't make every effort to make the right preparation, just like what the children of Israel did, they thought that they could be greedy by storing up extra. And some thought that I don't need the full amount for my family. I'm gonna go on the seventh day. And get some more. So God is teaching you obedience. Obedience. Obedience is teaching you. And he's also teaching you that the Sabbath day is very important. Now when you get in when you get into Sunday, we could go we could go have a study about Sunday if y'all want. I could take you into a study about Sunday. That's another study. <laughs> Yeah. 
after they talk about the sun. You will say the Sabbath could be any day you choose. I'm like, what? No. Any day you choose to be the Sabbath, that's all they were teaching it? Well, you and just you just got the teaching. Mm -hmm. Which is um Saturday. Mm -hmm. Saturday is Sabbath. Mm -hmm. Sabbath is Right. Mm -hmm. No, as we, and this is your get the clear understanding. And I don't care if it's the Old Testament, because God said, I am the word, and the word is God. So, the old I knew is the word of God. Mm -hmm. So, no, I'm getting a clear understanding. And like you said, I, in the medical field, so if there's an emergency, they call me, I could go because God said, if somebody is a donkey, Water would not a curse would not give my drink, or if you tell them the well, would not pull him out. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I'm gonna understand that a bit. And like you said, if, if we don't cook one day, we can we can we can make different things. We have canned stuff, we can open a can of tuna, can of something, and make a sandwich and eat and still be satisfied. So Sunday we wanna cook a good dinner here. Right. <coughs> right. Now. Yeah. Because some people try to use it as a trick, trick thing, you know. You, if if you have if you have provision in your house, you don't need to run out to the store and get something when you have provision in your house. So God have a problem with that. Is when you don't have provision in your house, it's better you go out and get something to eat than starve and die. If you know you're gonna starve and die. Don't starve yourself to death. Go get something and, and eat, and, 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 but you don't make it a habit. Because, because if something happened while you weren't able to prepare for the Sabbath. So you, you don't, but making it a habit and saying, um, oh, it's not wrong to go to the store on Sabbath. I'm going to go anyway. And every weekend you go to the store on Sabbath. You're not observing the Sabbath. No, you're being presumptuous. Obedient. You're being disobedient. That's right. Pastor, you know, before, before I started observing Saturday as the Sabbath, for some reason I never liked doing anything on a Saturday, like going shopping or anything like that. I don't know why, but I never liked going out on a Saturday. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Sister Charmaine, yes. I remember when I was young, when I was up here, I never, we used to go up right through the week. And when I went to Jamaica, back to Jamaica, my aunt used to say, we don't cook on a Saturday. Um, they, nobody cook, we eat on Friday, we have um, leftovers, but they would never turn on the stove on a Saturday. And Sunday, we got to get up bright and early to cook um, before, before we go to church mm -hmm. and stuff. So when you come back from church, you can have Sunday dinner. But on Saturday, they never used to cook. So that's mm -hmm. how I, I learned about, you know, not eating, um, not cooking on a Saturday. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, praise God for that. And... Um, so I, I hope you, you have a better understanding now of God's seventh day Sabbath because it is, it is quite well and all right and good to do good work on the Sabbath if you have a, to do something in an emergency or to maintain a life. It's, it, it's, it's all right. But when you, when you say, oh, you know, I, I don't care. I, I, I believe, you know, I believe that. I can do this and that and that. I mean, and they, you know, then, then you're disrespecting God. You know, you're disrespecting God because, I mean, after Jesus crucified, the, 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 they were, the apostles, they were still keeping Sabbath. If Sabbath was nailed to the cross, why would the, the apostles still keeping it after Jesus died? and resurrected? Why would they still be doing it? So um, we, we got to understand what men are teaching us out there. And um, there's a lot more to this if you need to learn any more. A matter of fact, I, I, I videotape what, what we did right now, and hopefully 
we can share this videotape with others um, if needs be. But um, to God be the glory, great things he has done. We thank him for his word. We thank him for his provision. When we thank him for the teaching of his word. And may we be hearers uh, and doers, not just hearers, but let us be hearers and doers of God's word so that we can live better life and we can be saved in the kingdom of heaven. The goal is to be saved in the kingdom of heaven. So when the Bible said, not everyone that said, Lord, Lord, shall enter in, if you don't come out of Babylon, if you don't come out of paganism, you, you, you're going to gonna find yourself on, a, on the wrong side uh, of things. So we understand that Pope uh, Constantine or, or Emperor Constantine at the time made the switch of, of the worship in uh, worship day. Um, but many people hold on um, to the teachings of the Roman Catholic and not the teachings of God. So I hope you are edified today. Somebody pray to bring this service to a close.